Hey guys, welcome to the round table. This is episode 93. We should start over because I completely <laughs> forgot to look. I'm pretty sure it is 93 though. It's okay. Okay. You should trust yourself. I should. Because even if you say it wrong, it's part of what people love about you. I know, you. that's true. But yeah. I'm pretty sure it's 93. So okay. it's episode 93. And I'm Jenny Walker, the social media ministry leader. I thought you were starting over. Here at Life Church. I was just going to keep going. Oh, got Isn't it. Isn't that what we normally do? Perfect. Keep going. You would have said, no, just keep going. Just keep going. And then I get annoyed. So I just kept going this keep time. Going. So we didn't Good. have to go through that. You are Jenny Walker. I am the social media ministry leader here at Life. And this is Mike Hill. He is our lead pastor. And sitting in between us is Bree Sullivan. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's when you need the sound effects. I know. We do need something because it is like awkward Well, satellites. you used to have them. Remember when we had the little push the, button thing yes. that your aunt gave you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to bring it back. We need like official stuff like Nick can do through the sound machine yeah, that, thing. That'll be the later on things, yes. the sound effects that we can go in. So yeah. Bree, tell us a little bit about you. What's going on in your life? What are the things that's hap like happening today? So things you're excited about, things that are going on, things that are happening at home. Are you a TV watcher? Did not, we say that? I'm not big into watching TV. Are you in movies? No. You're reading? I listen to things. Do you? Like, like you podcasts. Listen to, do podcasts you? mainly right now. Um, are, you, are you into podcasts or about killing people? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> it's a woman thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite murder podcast? Love that you crime listen to. Junkie. Yes, Crime, crime junkie, junkie. What is going on? Crime Junkie I is love great. It. They're Indiana girls. Like, yes. I feel like we're besties. Like yeah. just like you. Like yep. yes. because that's what girls listen to on how to murder their husbands. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's like how to keep yourself safe. Oh. Maybe it just makes me really paranoid. Yeah, <laughs> probably. But yeah. I'm listening to this new uh, podcast. It's called, which you would probably like. It's Letters from Sing Sing. And this Ooh. guy, do you know what I'm talking about? No. You had like that look on your face. No. It's about this guy who was like wrongly convicted and he's been in prison for the last 20, 30 years, I and think. his name Sing Sing? No, that's the prison. The oh. Sing Sing. Okay. It's in New York, I think. Yeah. It's so good. And? Well, I can't tell you all of it. Why? Because that would ruin it. Ruin yeah, it for I mean, he's been oh, incarcerated. You're gonna to he's been yeah. incarcerated and that for a crime that he didn't commit. I mean, they have a ton of facts that it was he was not at the crime, but the jury still convicted him. And it's this whole like conspiracy thing hmm. that I haven't got into yet. Okay. So you so you're a podcast listener, not a TV watcher, so you're not into Netflix, don't have a favorite movie? No, not really, no. no? I'm just not, I'm not into that kind of stuff that much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you into? Um, cows. right now cows. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've got, I'm so excited and it's actually not a great thing, but we have twins on the way with the cow, with <gasps> one of our cows. Wait, isn't that really rare? Cause you were telling it me. Is. Yeah. How many times have you had twins? Well, on? we don't have them, but it is rare for a cow to have twins. And it's but not it's also, the best thing, but yeah, it's not the best thing for the, cause they come out small. Yeah, uh, but it's exciting. Yeah. It is I'm exciting. So, so excited. And then we've got another one that's also pregnant. So we've got that coming up and then okay. we'll be milking again. Um, I homeschool okay. the kiddos. Um, so milking again. So like you're milking, milking. Yeah. Like old school. Well, I was for like a week and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> is it too no, hard? it's too long. Well, I think I was not doing it like right. I think she like wasn't letting down. I don't know what was going on, but I'm okay. like, I don't have time for this. Okay. Um, so we did get like a little milking machine. Yeah. So just like a little single and yeah. yeah. Uh, what is a milking machine for those who don't know? Um, Me. it like you put the, <laughs> <laughs> you put the like cups on the, the teats yeah. and then it like teats. provides the, <laughs> the vacuum suction. Jenny, why can't you just keep it? I don't know. Cold? I mean, like, why isn't it tits? It's, listen, why, they're, not not. Tits. Like, they're not tits. They're not tits. They're teats. 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 Yeah. Okay. This is the on thing. the udder. I'll just say the udder. I wanted to keep looking at you because I knew where your mind was going. Yes. Yeah. It's just, that's weird. And there's four of them. Yes, there are four of them. Four teats. teats. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Four teats on so the udder. So you only bought two? Cause you said a single, so you only, wait, you only bought one? One machine. So like one cow. Cause like a lot <laughs> of people milk teat. like multiple cows, like oh. at once, which yeah. we, we have two cows. So that's not so good. So do, you, do yeah. you pasteurize your milk? Not pasteurize? We don't your, pasteurize You it. drink it right. Mm -hmm. If we give it to Taylor Petrie, we have to pasteurize it for him. But <laughs> So how do you pasteurize it? <laughs> you just boil it pretty much. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you haven't had any stomach issues? No. So me and my son Thomas actually are like somewhat lactose intolerant mm -hmm. and it helps yeah. because like really? when you pasteurize mm -hmm. it, it 
like kills some of the bacteria or like lactase or lactose mm-hmm. that helps digest the lactose. Yep. So interesting. Um, we make wow. ice cream. So did you grow butter. up being a farmer? Kind of. Um, so once I was in high school, my parents bought like a farm a house in the country and they had like cattle. And my 16th birthday present was a dairy cow named Elsie May. <laughs> she was a heifer when I we bought her. And so my goal was like, I'm going to have this cow and I'm going to milk her, but she would never get pregnant. <laughs> like she was defective. I don't know. She Aww. was the defective mom. <laughs> um, so yeah. she never had a calf, so I could never milk her. So you just her. ate her instead. Eventually somebody did. Aww. I didn't. <laughs> she was, yeah. That was, but I did learn the reason why you have to kill them. Eventually. Yeah. Cause yeah. they'll lose their value. Like, if you I just learned. let them die, and yeah. then like, how are you going to bury them? Like, just that makes let sense. the coyotes eat them. Well, that sounds messy. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. so you have to. I mean, that's the cycle of life, right? You need yeah. to eat them. Right. Freezer camp. That's what yeah. we call it. What do you call it? Freezer camp. Freezer camp. <laughs> sounds like a great camp. <laughs> <laughs> so you're homeschooling. Yep, yeah. So we we'll talk about that. How's that going? Um, it's going. Um, at first I was like super mom, like I'm just going to pull from all these things and just curate this wonderful curriculum all on my own. And like, I don't have time for that. Right. So we just switched to, um, another curriculum that it's really neat. It's like kind of game based online and like tailors to where they're at mm-hmm. and like automatically will tell me what they need. And right. that's real nice. Yeah. So, so you, you could like create your own curriculum if you wanted. Yeah. So you could pull like your math lessons from Pinterest or your reading lessons from Google or like, yeah, you can pull things from everywhere as long as you're meeting like the. The standard and yeah, stuff like standards. that, like yeah. the 51%. So would you have to. <laughs> what? 51% doesn't it's have stuck. anything it, it, to no, do it's with stuck it. in my mind. I'm not going to forget it because okay. I just don't okay. understand it. Okay. But is it like, do you have to send it in somewhere and they okay it? No, in Indiana, you just, um, you just have to do 180 days of schooling. Okay. And it's like just days. So really you could spend like an hour of school and that counts as a day. Really? But when you think about it, like how much actual learning are kids getting in public school versus mm-hmm. how much of it is like institutionalization where, yeah. you know, okay, now we're all going to do this. And how much transition time do they have? Because it's a class of... 25. Yeah. So we typically do like three ish hours wow. of like sit down a day, but then we like, we're always educating them. Right. On things, yeah. So. They're young. Yeah. Wow. See, what you a what, see, why don't you bring that up? You brought that up in the last podcast, what? the debate, like we were talking about things oh, to debate, the, public school versus homeschooling. No, it was, it was Christian school, Oh, but that could be a debate too. Yeah. Do you, you have could. an opinion? On what? Public school versus public school versus homeschooling, like the arguments of why everybody should homeschool their kids. I don't think it's for everybody. I think like some families can't. Okay. I mean, um, but I I know in our case, homeschooling is better for our kids and for our family. And I think for a lot of kids, homeschooling is better, especially up to a certain age, because like. Five-year-olds are not designed to sit there Mm -hmm. for eight hours a day. They're just not. And I feel like they need more of that guidance. And for us, a big thing with homeschooling is like the craziness of the education system and all of the LGBTQ stuff. Mm -hmm. And like while we love everyone, you know, teaching them to be that strong in their faith at such young of an age, I feel like it's so much to ask, especially with our kids coming from foster care and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, different backgrounds, they are so much more vulnerable to negative things. So yeah, that's where I stand. I think public school is, they do their best, but it's not, I don't think it's for everyone. I feel gypped now. Why? Because how many days of school are you in school, like in high school or in like public school? <laughs> it's the same yeah. number. It's the same number it's of days. Just, I know, but not it's hours. The same not standards. hours. Not hours. Right. Yeah. I'm offended. That right. is ridiculous. I've wasted like they're gonna have so much time for their life to do like adventure stuff and learn that way. Yeah. And like, oh my gosh. So are you gonna homeschool your kids? I would like to. Yeah. Especially I can't even imagine later on, like everything that I've listened to about public school right now, like out in California, it's scary. Yeah. It really is. What do you mean out in California? Well, maybe not 
it, well, it definitely is out there and it is elsewhere, but it's just not here yet in oh. our school systems. Cause oh, I was actually it. What's talking being taught? Yes, okay. to my aunt that. about it. And she said that it won't be in their school system. Cause I guess they have a say in it. Maybe I don't really know, but mm -hmm. it's just terrifying to think what is coming. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, there's a big, and I think there's going to be a, like we homeschooled our kids for a while, mm -hmm. you know, and as they got older and wanted to play sports, that was the transition back into, cause you couldn't, like yeah. if you wanted to play sports, you had to go to school, you know, essentially back then. I don't know if it's still that way now. I but feel like it's different now, really? it but my kids are really young, so I don't, yeah, I don't know. It could be. I mean, it used to be, you had to take four out. You had to be in the school for four hours mm. if you wanted to be able to play sports. Well, at that point, you might as well just be there. Right. For know. the school though, like play sports for the school yeah, like or just anywhere? Gonna, no, play for the school. Oh, okay. Right? So if you're going to play on a school team, mm -hmm. you know, you had to be able to be on there. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so anything else going on in your life? I lead Hands of Hope. Yes. Yes. You talk about Hands of Hope a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I, oh, and I just started the mom's group and I'm so excited about that. What okay. is the mom's group? Um, <clears throat> so we call it diapers and devotionals. That's cute. Uh, because it's more targeted for moms of like younger kids because that's such like a specific <laughs> stage in life yeah. where you kind of want to rip your hair out yeah. most of the time. <laughs> um, so there's been like six or eight, six to eight core people that have been coming. Um, but like we just started it last month. Oh, wow. That's um, exciting. So yeah. just, I, we do like a little bit of Bible study, but it's mainly <clears throat> just like conversations around faith. Um, we're doing the devotional, a mom after God's own heart. Oh yeah. Um, it's a that. book, but we're doing like the devotional mm -hmm. portion. Mm -hmm. Um, and just kind of having conversations with that and then just really being able to like support and love on each other mm -hmm. and give encouragement um, and just have that fellowship. And yeah. it's like a break. So no kids allowed. Right. Right. <laughs> um, right. So it's like one night a week that we're able to get out of the house without the kids yes. and just have fellowship. Yeah, that's awesome. And talk a little bit about Hands of Hope. What is Hands of Hope? Because uh, I, I still think there are a lot of people that don't know about yeah. it and yeah. or how to be able to help or be involved. Mm -hmm. Sure. So Hands of Hope is a foster and adoptive parent support group. One thing I just realized last month is that every single family we have, we don't have any placements. So none of them are foster. They're all just adoptive at oh, this wow. point, hmm. which is like, a good yes, thing, right? great for the families. Yeah. You need that support then too. But like, what about the families who are in the thick of it? Like yeah. where's, where's all of our Huntington foster parents right. that, you know, need that support in the moment when you're going through all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of our goals is to try to get some people who are needing that support who are currently foster parents. Right. Um, and we love our adoptive families. Like, obviously like yeah, we're here for, for sure. them right. too, but yeah, that would be really neat. Um, so we meet on the third Monday of every month, a meal is provided, childcare is provided. And if you are an active foster parent, you get two training credits, two mm -hmm. hours of training credits. Mm -hmm. Um, and we support each other <laughs> through right. um, the fellowship. And then we also do different topics. So we'll talk about um, trauma and the effects on the brain or educating on different um, disorders that maybe mm -hmm. is pertaining to the kids. Um, yeah, just a lot of different things and discussions that we facilitate. We also have care communities, which we're kind of amping up here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the ways you can help. If you have a group of people who um, don't want to be foster parents, you're not able to for whatever reason, you can become a care community. Um, we're working on getting some trainings together for that so that you can go into that family and be prepared. But what that looks like is you kind of wrap around that family with support through tutoring or making meals or childcare, helping with yard work or different mm -hmm. things around the house. Um, because when you're a foster parent, there's so many things outside of just normal nuclear families, right? right. You've got visits and therapies and um, different services. Wow. Not even like considering the behaviors that you mm -hmm. may be having right. um, that just takes extra time. Um, and that's sometimes really hard yeah. <laughs> when you're in the thick of it. So that's the point of care communities is to like come around those families and, and help in all of those tangible ways that they can um, to make things a little easier for everybody in that family. So as for the hands of hope, if somebody wants to get involved and wants to be a care community, they just get with you or? That would be the best place to start. Okay. Yeah. Get with me. Um, the hands of hope ministry 
like higher up than just local. Mm -hmm. Um, they recently started, um, offering trainings. Um, so they're training me and then I will be training oh, the care it. communities. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what that would look like. Yeah. So again, Jenny, when she puts out the link or stuff, if people want to get involved or want to be able to help, or if you're a foster parent out mm -hmm. there and you're trying to figure out how to get involved in it, when Jenny sends out the link, you'll be able to hook up and yeah, get with Bree yeah. and, and be able to figure out out how to be involved or how to help. So take us back. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey. Did you grow up around here? Did you grow up in faith? Did you, you know, was, was God an important part of your life? So kind of tell us about your faith journey. Was it, what was it like back then? And how did you get to the place where you are today? Yeah. So I grew up in, um, a faith, faithful family. Um, <clears throat> my parents, were and still are Christians. I grew up, um, up Northern Indiana, kind of by like South Bend, Plymouth mm -hmm. in a small little town called Walkerton. I went to John Glenn high school. Walkerton, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I grew up. You went, went to where? John Glenn. Really? Yeah. Huh, well, Why? There was a guy that I used to coach with that coached football for John Glenn. Oh, really? Oh, what's his yeah, name? Austin Faust. Oh, I don't know them. Yeah. It's, it's a really small town, but I don't know. Yeah. Them. I mean, and again, it's just, been how long have you been out of school? <sighs> Why would you ask me? <laughs> I mean, you haven't been out that long. Long enough to know better than to answer that. <laughs> uh, no, like almost ten years. Yeah, no, he he would have been. He might have started coaching six or seven years ago because it was okay. after he. We all coached together here at Huntington, and then once that all blew up, then he went up to uh, to get a job. I think he's from Winnemac, but he coached at John Glenn. So. Mm. Okay. I still anyway. have a lot of connections there. My mom works in the school system, so. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah she's a treasurer, but she's like a gem there. Okay. <laughs> she's worked at all the schools and she's like the senior one and everybody knows like the office ladies run the place. So. Okay, <laughs> yeah. got it. Um, yeah, so I grew up there. Um, I grew up... My parents aren't going to like this, but <laughs> like just very inconsistent church going. Like yeah. they okay. always were very faithful, um, but they just like did not have a lot of structure mm -hmm. in going to church. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we did sometimes like we have a home church. We were married in our home church, um, Coons Lake Missionary. Mm -hmm. um, we just didn't go like a lot. But one thing I always remember is like anytime I would leave the house, be a light to others. My mm. dad would always Aww. say. Um and so like, that's a verse, like I can't quote it, but mm -hmm. be like to others. Um, and that's something that's always stuck with me. And I say to my kids now, yeah, um, that's cute. But yeah, so I, as a teenager, I think I kind of, I wouldn't say fell out of my faith as much as I rebelled mm -hmm. against it a little bit, because mainly the whole like, um, original design mm -hmm. kind of leaving out like the other half of like the man's role, just, mm. you know, it's kind of degrading women. And, um, you know, you must submit to your husband and it's like, well, if I don't believe in that, then how can I believe in like mm, yeah. all of the Bible and like that this is all, all true. Um, but I wasn't educated and like, that is not all of it. Right. Um, and so as I got older, um, I really started to like learn more about it and like the whole context of it. Um, and yeah, just like slowly but surely like grew in our faith. So I went to IPFW for college and then Riley moved like the year after <laughs> to come like be near me. And then um, a little before we got married, we started going to a church in Fort Wayne, Avalon. And that was a really great church. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard to leave it. But then we came to Huntington and we're like, well, I don't want to drive 45 minutes to church every day. Right. So, yeah. um, every Sunday. So then we found here. And even since being here, we've both grown in our faith so, so much. Mm. Um, we went from being like lukewarm, like we were believers mm -hmm. to like truly being on fire. Um, yeah. yeah, let's go. So backtrack just a little bit. There might not be any answer to this, but what do you think for somebody that is a Christian, why is church going from, like you said, your parents were just inconsistent in it. Why do you think that is not finding a good church, not seeing the value? Uh, like, I'm just curious, and I don't know if you know the exact answer, but. For my any... parents, it was church hurt. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I, I can say that. And then I think for me, like 
you know, my mom had relationships with some of the other moms and then they had kids, daughters, yeah. my yeah. age, right. and then they were very clicky. Um, so we weren't going every week. So when right. I did go, yeah. it was like, you weren't in the click. Excluding. Yeah. yeah. It's like, why would I want to go? Right. No, that makes um, sense. So yeah. it was, that's what I wondered because again, usually people that are faithful tend to find a place unless the churches burn them, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, or unless something happened inside of the church that just wasn't good. And then it's, you know, kind of carries over from there. Where's it a big church, small church? Small, smaller than this church for sure. Um, but it's a very small rural area. Yeah, for sure. So like there aren't even that many churches to pick from. Right. Um, it was one of the bigger churches in the area, right. I'd say, because it's <laughs> right. like, you know, like the one room, mm-hmm. um, I think is a lot of the options around there. Mm-hmm. And this one is, I don't know, the size of the congregation. Yeah, either way. Yeah. yeah. And so then part of your rebellion was you and Riley dating then? Like, how did he fit into it? It was kind of like, oh, we just went to IPFW, we're married and Ended up here. So where did he fit into this whole story? Yeah. Riley and I went to high schools that were 45 minutes apart. Um, (laughs) We were both in FFA and which is Future Farmers of America. If you don't know. Maybe there's people that don't know what FFA is. I know. That's ridiculous. I know what it is. I'm I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, So we were in the same district, district region. I don't know. We were in the same thing. And um, so everybody, all these like farming kids are in this big gym and we were divided up into groups. Um, and of our, our group of probably like 20 people, they said, now go stand in the group of people that are wearing cowboy boots. And we were the only two people <gasps> oh, that were wearing That's so cute. Boots. Wait a second. You're at an FFA I know. gathering. <laughs> I know. And these people ain't wearing cowboy it's boots. A God thing. Yeah. Oh my God. That is so, wild. So yeah, we were in our little group and we met and exchanged numbers. I was grounded at the time and I got home. I'm like, Mom, please, I really like them. Please let me text them. Wow. Um, so And you were how old at this I was, time? I think I was 14 or 15. Okay. Wow. That's yeah, so young. Riley was a farmer? Well, his his <laughs> grandpa, he did like farming things with his grandpa. But I mean, he was like he dress the part like okay. he did the boots and the flannel and yes the like, he was yeah. wearing he cowboy boots yeah yeah he sure was <laughs> yeah yeah so, so yes yeah, um, so you guys met young we did and we dated off and on through high school and then um <laughs> we broke it was kind of a messy history <laughs> um he broke up with me I was a freshman in college and then I, it was two days before Christmas. <gasps> that is so d- rude. And was, he dumped you right before Christmas. He did. Wow. Riley. Yeah. It was wow. not great, but he's grown so much. Like yeah, he's, you an amazing, that. he's an amazing man, an amazing <laughs> husband, an amazing dad. Um, so he, he dumped me and then I was like home and miserable, like on break, like all my friends, like it was, nobody was around. So then I went back to Fort Wayne and I'm like, Hmm. I'll show him. <laughs> like, so I was like living my best life, like going on dates with people and like having so much fun. And then he saw that and he's like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, men take a while to like realize like, well, shoot, that probably wasn't a, a good idea. Yeah. So then he came back around and I'm like, hmm, I don't know. We'll see. That's- and then we got back together and then 11 days later we were engaged. <gasps> wow. Yeah. So that's so, I'm just curious about this. So your best life, not meaning, (laughs) you liked dating? No, I I don't. It was not my best life. (laughs) It's like best life. Yeah, at that time, I was No, I know even at that time. Like, I can't imagine dating different people. It's awful, man. I mean- like no, I'm not saying for thing. you. I'm just in general because yeah. I've heard people. Oh, it's so so much fun. A lot of you people go out. Like you get it. to meet new people. You yeah. get to do- when you're that young. It was fun. Ugh. But like I lived on <laughs> campus and like everybody was on campus and it. I know. Fun. I would hate it. I can't imagine it. I've only ever dated two people. Yeah. <laughs> so I dated Sherry and married her. Dated Sarah and married her. I mean, I I've never like- even been on it like that. Yeah, that whole I didn't like date, like I wasn't like exclusive with anyone else. It was just like, oh, we're gonna go to Biagi's tonight. Fun. Like (laughs) things like that. Like (laughs) exclusive, meaning that like when you go on a date, you have to be exclusive. Like what's the going to Biagi's? What do you call that? That was just going on a date. Like random, just like him asking you. Oh, you're going on a date, but you're not dating them. Right. Yeah. So like I wasn't dating, I was going on dates. I guess. So meeting a bunch of people. Yeah. And yeah. that was fun. Oh, that would be awful. Being a girl, you don't have to pay for this. <laughs> That's true. 
<laughs> no, I was just curious because I that would be my worst nightmare. It was a very brief phase. I mean, no, I, yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying a personal thing. Yeah, like for me to have to get to know or go on a date with five, six, seven, eight. I'm well, a talker though. Yeah, that's why I would do it at the bars, except it was drinks. You know. <laughs> You didn't want any food. You just wanted to go with the guy that'd buy you drinks. Yeah, so it would be like at late at night instead of like during the day, probably. So it's like yeah. X-rated part of dating. And I don't know why I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't that that? I just Wait a mean second. My dating We're phase. talking about Brie going to Biagi's <laughs> and you're like, I'm on X-rated party dates. Can anybody... <laughs> How did that come up? I don't get that. I meant she's going like dating, like, you know, like wholesome like, dating you know, yes, and you're on X rated dating. dating. And I'm going out to clubs, finding, like, getting drinks, finding a guy. Okay. Did Anyways. you like it? Did you like getting Oh, to I know? loved that. But that oh. wasn't dating. Yeah. That was something else. <laughs> no, Dad. No, Either I don't way, like dating that now. was off the subject. I do not like I was, dating now. But I came, I went back to Fort Wayne in like January, and we were engaged by July. So yeah. which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. What, so, so what how, happened? How yeah. did it become so fast? Like, I don't remember. What draws your heart? Well, or what? Oh, I do remember. So I was moving apartments, uh -huh. and like he like was back in my life, and we like we were talking, like we were not like. Back Exclusive. together by any means. Yeah, we were, we were going on dates. Yeah, right. right. Um, and so I moved into this new apartment and I had so much anxiety about this move for some reason. Um, and I, like all I wanted was him mm. there, like to support me. Like, uh, and so, that, so that's that when moment, you gotta start playing the music. Yes. Uh, oh. All I wanted was Riley. So at that in my moment, room. I knew, like, well, this is it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, yeah, 11 days later, he proposed. Okay. Wow. And then how long till you got married? It was a long engagement. It was like two years. Okay. Waiting to get done with school or what? No, I wasn't done with school yet. Uh, waiting to be able to afford it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Is that ever even possible to afford it? We, our wedding was very affordable. <laughs> it was, yeah. But I'm like bougie on a budget. So. Are you? Yeah. Are you the budgeter? Of, oh. Or are you both budget? Well, we both budget. I've, I like... I like to get really good deals, but I'm also like anymore not great about like saving. Yeah. So. I feel like that's saving. Are you the budgeter? I'm everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't like budgeting. You don't no. like doing that kind of stuff. No. Yeah. Uh, or saving money. No. Yeah. So Brie, talk to us about you, you get married, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys are married for like, how long have you been married now? Almost six years. Six years. Okay. Yeah. So again, did he grow up in faith? Like, where was his faith journey? Not good. No? Um, his grandma is Jehovah Witness, and they kind of dragged him to church a lot. And it was just very ugly. I don't know, like, all the ins and outs of that. So that really turned him away from faith. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that I'm like, Riley, like, I don't want to marry you if you don't believe in like God and right. and I probably like coerce him into it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, if you want to marry me, you better go to church. Don't do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, and we started going to Avalon and he kind of started to like get used to the idea of it and kind of start believing a little bit. And I would like really push him like, I'd really love it if you would get baptized. Like that's mm. so important to me, please do it. And then he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't for whatever reason. And then it was so beautiful because I'd stopped asking him because I realized like me asking him is like him doing it for the wrong reason right. anyway. Mm -hmm. So I might as well right. stop. But then baptism Sunday, I think two times ago, he's like, I want to do this hmm. just like completely unprompted. And that was awesome. Yeah. 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 And so how'd you guys end up at Avalon? Like, is that just a church close to where you were? were it living? was close to where we lived. And I kept saying like, I want to go to a missionary church because mm -hmm. I was a little fearful of like, I don't want to go to a church that's like, cultish or you know mm. something weird like that so i'm like i know it i mean we were young like <laughs> so i'm like well this place looks nice um and it was great there were really nice people there we still keep in touch with a lot of them right. how would you be able to tell if a church is culty by the outside um i don't know I, we, we just went by like oh it's missionary it must be okay oh, okay i don't i don't know if that's a good way to do it or not but but you got that's lucky. what we did yeah we were lucky yeah. you got lucky you it got wasn't lucky a call twice. yeah, <laughs> <There too>. yeah. <laughs> so how did you end up back in huntington why did you guys move to huntington so i worked for bowen center in huntington okay. while we lived in fort wayne um and riley had worked in huntington a few different times throughout 
when we lived in Fort Wayne. Um, so then we're like, well, let's just <laughs> make the move. We wanted to live in the country. We were trying to find somewhere that Riley's grandma could like live on our property, but have like her own little oh, okay. thing. And so she's from around here? No, she's from Michigan. Oh, so, so she wanted to buy a property. I'm confused. Well, How did that fit So into? we bought the property that had oh. like a, a granny flat is what we call it. A granny <laughs> flat. Well, we had to make it a granny flat, but yeah. Okay. It's a nice granny flat. It is. It is. Really? Yeah. She lives in a nice little house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. They built it, right? It was built well, or the you re- The building was there and we redid it. That's right. Yeah. It's nice. So it had plumbing and like HVAC in it already. And then like everything else was redone. Floors, windows, put in a full kitchen, full bathroom. Wow. Yeah. Granny's living the I high know. life. She put in a lot of money. <laughs> uh, we're Listen. like, that's really, like, you really don't have to put in that much. And she's like, no, no, I want to. Okay, hmm. okay Grandma. I'm trying wow. to build a tiny house. Uh, not a tiny house. Yeah, it is a tiny house, but like a really small one on somebody's property. You are? Yeah. Who's going to let me? You could do it online. <laughs> the problem is, do you know how expensive property is? The problem is like hooking it up. You have a bunch it. of... um Room? Yeah, four acres. Oh, I mean, shoot. You wouldn't even do, know where, I do you wanna, where do you want to live? I don't care. Just anywhere on the property. No, I know. Like Urbana, Wabash, Huntington. Just, I really don't care. Bluffton. Oh, I think Mike's offering one of his properties. Oh, you have property? Well, we have multiple properties. You do? I, I was just saying we just bought, yeah, Heifer World over in Bluffton, and it doesn't have a house on it, and it's got 1,100 cows. You could walk right out your back door. Oh, oh, I could see you just going out in your little <laughs> I could just see Jenny I could see walking. myself running. <laughs> be afraid could, it's outside. got a nice little garage on it. It's got a two car garage and a little office on it. And so I could just make that a little tiny house. Yeah, renovate it. Yeah, because it's like a studio apartment. It's not mm-hmm. really a tiny house. Well, maybe, but I, it's like just one studio apartment kind of thing. Are you going to work at Heifer World? Like, I don't you're going to go out and do what chores? Heifer anymore? World is. Let me negotiate with you. What kind of discount are you giving on rent? <laughs> Why you like Heifer World? I'm asking for you. I'm helping. Why? What do you want from Heifer World? No, I'm she's trying to, to negotiate you. for oh, you. What would I want from she, Heifer World? Huh? A discount on rent. On rent. Oh, got you. <laughs> she's trying to help you here, Jenny. <laughs> I Stay see. in the conversation. I see. I see. I see. Thank yeah. you. Well, That's yeah. very kind. So anyway, so you end up in Huntington because you guys are both working here and you yeah. wanted to live in the country. Yeah. Because it was your dream to be farmers. Yeah. Okay. So now you're, do you just have a cow? Uh, We've got a lot of chickens and we hatch our own little chicks. Uh, And then we got two. Wait a second. Are we allowed to talk about the chicken story that Taylor (laughs) talked about? Huh? Yeah, you can. Taylor says there's, Taylor comes into work the one day and said, hey, I got to go out and take care of the Sullivan's rooster. It's like, really? I said, oh, like. Is it mean? Yeah, it's mean. And it's this tall. <laughs> so, I mean, so if you listening, I mean, he made it seem like this rooster was six foot tall. It was a very large rooster. <laughs> it wasn't six feet tall. But, I mean, wingspan, maybe. I don't know. It was large and in charge. Either way, Taylor, Taylor made it sound like this thing was massive. It was terrible. He came over and laughed at me because I had like a pitchfork by the gate. Like, <laughs> this thing's going to get me, yeah. Taylor. So, Have you ever had a rooster chase you? No, but I've had um, other little bird things. <laughs> <Ducks>. <laughs> geese. Geese. Oh, yeah, they're mean. You've had geese chase you? Yes. Oh, you want to hear a story? Funny yeah. s- side note. All right. So it was when I was working at Hooters and this Hooters that I work. <laughs> so I do laugh every time I say that. It's I a family know. restaurant. I okay. Yes. Anyways, okay. so I went to Einstein Bagels before, like, this is where I like to go. And I would walk over to Hooters because it was right there. It was on Castleton in Indy. And I got my bagel, walked out the back, and all these geese, because there was a pond somewhere near, came swarming at me. <laughs> and what? Oh, just listen. I'm holding on for dear life. They're coming <laughs> me after the bagel. I'm screaming. And then, like, I don't even know how long this went on, but the ladies from Einstein Bagels came out and she saved my life. To she, rescue you. You're supposed to like put your wingspan, like, or put your arms like a wingspan out and like run after them. And she came out, I guess they were in there dying laughing because they knew it was me, <laughs> like screaming. And they're like, should we go and help her? And then they came out and she told me that fact. So these people coming died. across Einstein with their arms flapping, running across the street. <laughs> yes. Like scaring the geese <laughs> yes. away. Yes. And then when I went to work, my manager, she got to haul. I was like really upset or because, I mean, 
I was just chased by like 20 of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was probably like 10 or eight. I or was going to say it might've been two or three, <laughs> yeah. but that's no, okay. It was a ton and they were huge. Yeah. And she was like, are you okay? Yeah. That's, that's the end of my story. <laughs> if I tried doing that to this rooster, I, I wouldn't have a face anymore. I'm sure. <laughs> like it was Because the way the rooster's going to like kill you is. Chawing your face. Yeah. Like attacking like your face. Don't I don't they don't have teeth. They don't. It's, it's, you should see the size. Of it. It's claws were bigger than my hands. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> that sucker. The, the it, okay, it wouldn't even die. Like Taylor brought like this big old gun out, right? And he shot it. And I'm like, yeah, we're done with this stupid booster. <laughs> Came back and to life. Tommy's gonna say I said bad words now. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> God, sorry, Thomas. Um, and it, he shot it in it. Then it like starts getting back up. And I'm like, oh my gosh. He's like, turn around, Pre. He takes it out again. Feathers are flying. Could this, have, could this happen to be with Taylor's accuracy on shooting? Have I know. Anything to do no, with he it? got it. it. That just sucker didn't want to die. It was. <laughs> it was demented. It was, it was a mean, mean rooster. So mean. Was there a reason you got a rooster? Do you like your eggs fertilized or what? Well, we do actually now. <laughs> they fertilize them? Well, we incubate them and we hatch them, but we've. When we got it, it was young and we thought it was a hen because it like hadn't grown into oh, like a rooster yet. It. And then we're like, oh, well, we'll just keep it because, you know, well, you can hatch our own eggs. And, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. some people like their eggs fertilized. I don't understand that. That hmm. doesn't. Yeah. But how would the rooster fertilize them? How do, you, how do you think? I just don't like, know. When do I think, think of fertilizer, like, I don't think of that. Huh? What do you, how, is there, you mean like the chickens? Huh? How, how does a rooster interact with a hen that would create another chicken? Oh, I thought you literally were meaning the eggs like were already hatched. No. So and they were like, fertilizing them somehow. No. So like the rooster, when he wants to go out and have some fun with the... With the little chickens? Yeah. He the fertilizes <laughs> the eggs. So Got that the you. point would be is then if you would incubate it, it would turn into a chicken. So some people like it so that they feel like the yolks uh -huh. are better if they're fertilized because if you let them grow for a while, essentially that's the part that turns into the chicken. Yeah, that's really gross. Whoa. I don't... But that's only if like they get sat on or like have heat. Yeah. My mind is blown right now. Huh? I'm so confused. So there are some people that like to have roosters because they think it makes their eggs better, even if they don't hatch them. But, I just like to hatch the little chicks. Yeah. But then if you want to, then you can take them, put them in an incubator. If you have a rooster and you can create your own herd. So it's going to sound really dumb. Two chickens do not make eggs. Do chickens <laughs> make eggs? What do you mean? Do they make them? I mean, do they have them? Do they? I mean, two chickens lay, lay eggs. Two but chickens a, lay eggs. But a hen or a that thing? No, I can't a think hen, of the name. A hen is a girl chicken. Okay. A rooster is a boy chicken. Oh, never mind. Please, can we carry on? Yeah, but a hen <laughs> will have eggs without a rooster. Yes, oh. they'll still lay the eggs. They just won't be fertilized. Yeah, they won't be fertilized. It's just like lemon, like. You know, you can. No, I don't. Some eggs. <laughs> we won't go there. We won't go there. No. We won't go there. Women no. are just like chickens. I mean, they, <laughs> right. they just let the eggs come just out, and once in a while, they get fertilized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same concept. I get it, except theirs are out their yes. body. Yes. Yeah. Right. And yours aren't. Where do your eggs go? I mean, aren't they inside? Yeah. I mean, I guess eventually they come out. Right. If they're fertilized. No. But no, we they, can't. We, the, the egg is shot. <laughs> this is a biology lesson I don't think we want to go into. Yeah, no. Yeah, but either way, so farming, chickens, hands of hope. How many kids do you have? Three. Three kids, homeschooling, so you're busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you stay really busy. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, again, so we're at our 40 minutes. So let's wow. make sure that we do questions. Because there's a lot. A lot of them? I mean, there's a good amount, yeah. Wow. Like there's then you're going to give all, you're going to give words of wisdom to all of our listeners. Okay. Yeah. At Ooh. the end, like as a busy homeschooling farming milk produced, not milk producing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <bad>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You're, you're not a milk producing. <laughs> this is very confusing. <laughs> you have a cow that you're getting milk from. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I think all that stuff's cool. We're going to, we're getting ready to. Get all of our chick because hopefully we're going to be moved into the Urbana house here in a month. Maybe. Oh wow! So hopefully we'll have all of our chickens, geese. Was that, that a 
Sorry, I just laughed. I thought it was such a chicken noise. <laughs> you heard a chicken noise. I thought he was doing a sound. I did over too. There. <laughs> okay, questions. Okay, question time. Here we go. All right, Elizabeth Grover. She wants to know what has been the best thing about being a part of Hope Hands of Hope Ministry. Oh, that's a good question. I know. Um, I just really love the fellowship. Mm. And just being able to be a support for the other families. Yeah. Um, I like leading. I like leading things in mm-hmm. general. Um, but I like being able to like reach out to like the families. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like when you're in that leadership position, you kind of have like not the obligation, but like that's kind of your position to do that. Um, so if I know of a family that's struggling, I can reach out to them um, and just yeah, be extra supportive for them. And you know what that feels like, or, you know, like being in their position too. Yeah. So are you a natural leader? Like, do you like to be in control and in charge? And I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Design. Hmm? The original design has been a good sermon for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Gina Van Meter. Oh, she I just has her. a comment. She says, Brie is a beautiful Christian woman, heart, women. Woo. What am I reading? <laughs> I'm so thankful to know. Whom I'm so thankful to know. There we go. Awesome to see what God has done in her life and excited to see what he has planned for her and her family's future. Much love, Gina, with a heart. Aww, Aww. I love you, Gina. I know, she's so she's sweet. She's so sweet. Thomas loves her so much. Does she? Yeah. Oh, she's Does got he? the patience of a saint with her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesse, and she gave me, a, or she told me how to pronounce it. Haft. Yes, I think that's right. Because it's spelled weird, and she actually gave me like the pronunciation, okay. which is super this nice. This is a new person. Yes, it is. This her. is a new person. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. I know. A new question yep. person. Good yep. job. People are finally catching I on. I know. I know. I was excited. Yeah. So she wants to know, when did your passion for adoption begin? Hey, that's a Ooh, great question. We never even got into that. Really early on. Um, like, I was still in high school. Well, I wouldn't say adoption. Fostering. Like okay. our plan had always been like, we're going to like have biological kids and then we're going to like foster. Mm-hmm. And if adoption comes about great, but like, we're just going to foster. Um, had you seen it before? Yeah. So I worked on a dairy farm when I was in high school okay. and they were foster parents. Oh, um, so it. it was, yeah, really, really neat to be exposed to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was so passionate about that. And we had called several times, like, right after we were married, which we were not <laughs> like, we should not have been, we had no business <laughs> being foster parents at that time. Um, but like, we really wanted to, um, and then the pandemic hit and we're like the world's upside down. Like nobody mm-hmm. knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, I don't know that biological kids is like what we want to do. You know, who knows what's going to happen. So, you know, fast forward. Um, and then I was working for Bowen center in a DCS liaison position and seeing every single day, like these kids that were in foster homes or needed adoptive homes. Um, and I found out about like the kid catalog, basically for kids that need homes. Mm-hmm. And we got on and we were looking and, and Riley wasn't like super on board. He's like, yeah, I want to do this someday, but today's not the day. Right. Um, and then like reading some of those things, he was like, today's the day, like let's yeah. start. Um, so yeah, hmm. I don't know why. Like it's just always, I've always been like a very nurturing person too. Well, that, again, so I'm going to ask this, but if you don't want to answer it, that's perfectly fine. So the decision to do foster care and adoption had nothing to do with infertility? No. Mm-mm. See, I that's a complete surprise. That's amazing. Because I would say most of the time, yes. people make that decision after yep. right. they've tried. You know, and so they're like, okay, this isn't working, so we're going to be able to try that. I mean, that's unique that Mm -hmm. you guys would make a decision to do foster to adopt before you would do biological. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that's really important for me for our kids to know Mm -hmm. um, because I don't ever want, and I hope this doesn't come across the wrong way yeah, for get, parents that don't, but like, right. I don't ever want them to think they were not our first choice mm-hmm. yeah, because they were like, you were the second option. Yeah. yeah right. they, they were our first choice. Like right. we want, we, we I had never them. even thought about that. We yeah. have biological kids. Yeah. We, we hope to, okay. I mean, that's not up to me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, but yeah, I guess I said like that to. wrong. I just didn't know if it was like, Oh, we've decided mm-hmm. not to have biological kids and yeah. just keep doing this. But yeah. So you're still going to go down that road too. Yeah, we'd like to. Yeah. Um, when we started, we were like, mm, no, you know, we're good. But I think being a mom 
and yeah. Riley being a dad, it's like we've missed this stage. Mm. Um, and we really like to experience that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. Kaylin Griffith. Oh, I love her. Uh, <laughs> Brie is kind and she has a loving heart. And what's your favorite part about having cows and do the kiddos help care for them? And she has a bunch of cow emojis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Bailey is a really excellent hand milker. Okay. Um, really? So yeah, she does amazing. She'll sit right down on the stool with me and you know, she'll do like one and I'll do the other one. And yeah, she's amazing. Um, we had have calves and like, they'd all like take turns bottle feeding them Aww. with me. They'll give them hay and they'll, they go down there with us and they, I, that's so important to us too, yes. for them to like see us work and work with us. Right. Um, so yeah. And then our favorite part about it is I like ha- not having to pay for milk when they're <laughs> yeah. producing milk. They're dry right now. So we do. Um, right. But yeah, I really like that. And just like being able to go out and see them. Cause well, and you said like, Doing it as a family. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's a, a, a really important part of watching your family be able to work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And watching them learn about it, you know, just being able to be like self-sufficient and like right. grow your own food. And eventually they'll do 4-H yeah. when they're old enough. So that's right. Get off the grid, grow your own food, milk your own <laughs> cows. I'm all in. And they'll be able to do that. Yeah. Then you got to te- you teach them how to butcher. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but she's not even doing that. Huh? Yeah. I'm not doing that. I don't know. Riley Will Riley to do take it? Take care of that. Take I don't think out. he would either. No? <laughs> no. I, if he had to, yeah. he would, but. Yeah. All right. Nelson Little, what are your future goals for Hands of Hope? Where is it headed? And what vision has God put on your heart for your ministry? I can re-say these if you need me to. And okay. there's another one. Um. So I already kind of talked about one of the goals is like, I really want to grow the ministry mm-hmm. because we have the same small number of families who come and they're great. I love mm-hmm. these families, but I think we have so much more to offer. So mm-hmm. I really want to grow that, get more families who have active placements, not mm-hmm. just adopted kiddos, because I feel like that's a group that really needs a lot of the help. Um, what were the other question? <laughs> Where is it headed? But I guess it would yeah, be no, that that's, way. She said that. Yeah. yeah. So opening it up to foster parents that mm-hmm. haven't been involved in it. And again, she brought up getting more care groups involved so that when people are in active placements, it can be a part of that. And yeah. So yeah. And one thing we're working on too is um, we recently switched our license to DCS directly instead of an LCPA. So I'm working with our caseworker to like, get it out to the families. Mm. So I really, a big goal is for everybody that's involved in foster care and adoption in Huntington to know about it. Not even just Huntington, Mm -hmm. like the surrounding areas. Right. So. Right. Good. And he says, P.S. You are wonderful. I love you and your family and love what you are doing. Your one song, absolute awesome woman. Aw. What does that mean? I mean, she's a wonderful, absolute woman. The one song? Oh, I don't know the one song. Yes, no. You probably just typed that right. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Love you too, Nelson. And all the littles. Fun all fact, right. Nelson is Tommy's godfather. And Charlie's really? his godmother, yeah. Oh, that's, so that's cool. cool. All right, Sarah Jeffers. How has adoption changed you? And how has your view of adoption changed since becoming a mom through adoption? Ooh, that's a good question. Those are deep questions. So one of the things that I've found, it is so hurtful to say real mom. Mm. like, or real dad, but it's Mm. usually real mom. Um, because it's like, I'm not their biological mom. I didn't give birth to them, but I'm their real mom. Um, or saying like, are you going to have children of your own? Um, yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean that bad. No, you didn't say that. I didn't really mean it bad. I was just curious. You didn't say that. You said biological children. Yeah, you worded it different. Okay. Because, yeah, I I try to like correct people in like the most polite way, but you said biological children. That's absolutely like the correct way to say it. Like children of your own, like- Means that they're about, not, like, it sounds like the, your yeah. children are not Which, yours. like, for me, oh, okay, you, I get you know it. what I mean? But, like, yeah. makes if, sense. like, if you yeah. were to ask something, like, like in that way, and, yeah. like, my three are sitting there, right? Yeah. like, it just sends the a, not yeah, a great message. Sure. And, like, it's so hurtful. So I've become very, like, hyper aware yeah. of those things. Um, I've also, since adopting our three, I've developed, like, a heightened sense of compassion, I'd say for their bio moms. Mm. Um, We've worked really hard at building those relationships. One, 
I think is pretty successful. The other it's there. It's just not as like, not as present. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to explain unless Mm -hmm. you've like lived it. Yeah, no, I mean, but I think that's what you're saying is perspective. That's what he had. Like what's the perspective change. And part of that perspective is, is having a compassionate Mm -hmm. open heart to the biological mothers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good. And one thing for anybody like having questions about foster care and adoption, um, the book Foster the Family Mm. is such an amazing book. Um, It's by Jamie Finn. Um, And it, that really changes your perspective Mm. on like the biological families. Mm. Um, Cause it's, yeah, there's a lot of things in that and I could go on and on. Um, You love that book. I love that book so much. It it changed my life. I don't think I would have gotten through like all of the court hearings for Mm. everything with our three without that book at the time I had it. Wow. Um, Because it like, you'll go crazy. Like you're talking about like your children that are in your home, you are raising them. And then you don't know from one month to the Mm, next. If you're going to have them. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you understand like. Yeah. I I mean, not nearly as much as you guys did because we chose to, at the time we had the choice to put the kids in foster care. We were licensed foster parents, which with the whole idea to do foster to adopt, that was that was our whole plan because I didn't know how well I could do. Like, I didn't think I'd have much sympathy to send them back to the families, Mm -hmm. right? Like, they'd go back. And so anyway, we had that plan. But when we took in the Clark kids, we had the choice because when they're not in foster care, you don't get anything to help, you know, and not that that's good or bad. But they said, we'll make them a ward of the state and we'll just put them back in your house, you know, and then you can get the stipends and the benef- the things that go with that type of stuff. And I just opted out of the idea because of just, not that there's anything wrong with the foster care system, but at times there was like- There's a lot wrong with the foster care system. Yeah, I just thought <laughs> there, was, yeah. there was a lot of broke things mm-hmm. that in my opinion, I didn't want to subject those kids to. And so we just never put them in foster care. We just did it on our own and- we became their legal guardian instead of their adoptive because if we would have went adoptive, then we had to bring mom and dad back from Indy. And then we wow. opened up a whole nother can of worms that, you know, their parents hadn't been around. They'd been incarcerated, hadn't been around for four years. And we were like, the kids were like, we adopt us because, and I'm like, I, we see you regardless uh-huh. as mom and dad. We will always treat you as mom. I mean, that's, you will always have that with us. But yeah, and they said, well, if you do that, mom and dad has to come back. You know, mm-hmm. mom and ask dad have to be a part of it. And I'm like, I haven't been here for how long, you know? And so we just decided to stay out of it. So I don't know the extent, but I have heard it's rough, like going yeah. through the, the court system and the unknowns, because at least we had some control, mm-hmm. right? Where you entered into the unknown. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we had like even great grandparents who were not fit to take Mm -hmm. one of them. Um, And it was a fight. I mean, up until like a month or two before adoption was set to happen. And it's roller coaster is such a cliche, but I mean, it's the best way to explain Mm -hmm. what that does to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It takes part of it and I get it. Right. But the thing that I didn't like about the foster care system, they just flat out say in classes, our job is to reunite them with the parents. Yeah. Which is insane. They, it's and the parents' rights and it the kids shouldn't have be none. the parents' rights. Right. And I just couldn't understand it. Like I couldn't understand how just as an example, the so when we become licensed foster care parents, you have to have certain square footage mm-hmm. in your house. Your water has to be taken. You have to go through all these Which is the insane. Clark kids lived in an escalade. Yeah. Didn't have a pl- and it was completely okay. Like they weren't gonna do anything about that. Right. They didn't care about any of that because the foster care system or the system says you can't fault somebody for being poor. Well, I but yet know. you have to have all this space. Yeah, either way, I could get off on a long subject. We about- just had to get a fire extinguisher and smoke detector for our basement. Our basement is not like a livable space, it's yeah. like storage. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just so craziness silly. on some of the stuff. So, I, I mean, I could go on and on, but yeah, so I feel for you being a part of the, having your heart 
Yeah, you I know, couldn't even imagine. Yeah, that. just the guardedness. Yeah, and if you leave it Fear. open, what if it's broke? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. yeah, so. And the adoptions are done now, and we're living in like a yeah. post adoption yeah. place. I feel. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it is. Like nobody yeah. can be taken from you. Yes. yes. Kind of feeling. Yes. yes. It's amazing. All right, Jess Ulry. I have I loved her. getting to know her better the last few weeks. How did they get their little homestead started? And what are some goals that she has for the future? So we had, well, we bought our property in the country specifically, like, cause we wanted to do that eventually. There's like a big, like open barn. And so I convinced Riley <laughs> to uh, put up some fencing and we talked about it for a really long time. And then we finally like pulled the trigger, like, let's do it. And then we got um, some chickens and then we got Winnie, our cow, and she came with two calves and then we got another one and... <laughs> Yeah. She came with two calves. Yeah. <laughs> she did. Yeah. I know, well, just her funny. calf and then another. Yeah. yeah. It's a great system because then like they drink some of the milk and it grows them. And Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You've learned so much today. Yeah. I think the whole homesteading thing is fascinating. I can't wait till we get moved in and yeah. Ready for the big garden, truck patch. What's your favorite thing to do out of the garden or make out of the garden? Not make, but bro. Um, like I love make growing stuff to make salsa. Mm, you know, yeah. So I, the thing Homemade that I salsa. wish I could figure out, like I would love to do potatoes, but I can't figure out how to keep them all year. Like I've never been able yeah. to figure out how to store them mm-hmm. like in a cellar type area. But this new, well, the Urbana house has one of the scary basements, <gasps> you know, where it's like a, I mean, it's a basement, but it's not like a real basement. It's like a seller, yeah. I guess, if that's the right yes. word for it. So I think there are ways that you can keep that stuff and keep your potatoes and onions. Because that's what I'd love to do is grow it and then put it all up. And again, same concept, can, you know, yeah. all of the stuff, canned chicken, canned beef, green beans, salsa. You're ready. Yeah, ready. <laughs> ready what, for the adventure. What was your second question? Um, what are your goals? Wow, look at you. You have such a great memory. No, I just, yeah. So Um, homesteading and then if you have any goals. Goals for the homestead. Oh, for the homestead. For the homestead, yeah. Um, Not to overwork ourselves. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot of work. And I'd be like, oh, look at this cow. I really like this cow, Riley. And he's like, no. So you're wanting to buy more cows? Oh, I would buy another cow. It's like a tattoo. You need a peacock. What does a peacock oh, do? No, they're just, they're more birds. I don't really like, mm, no. <laughs> oh, but peacocks. We, so we want, what do they do? Hmm? No, they don't do anything. They're oh, but why pretty. would you want one? Oh, they're just pretty. for looks? Yeah, they sit in the top of your barn I want to keep it at your house. <laughs> huh? I want to keep it at your house. <laughs> I am getting a peacock. Um, eventually we want like pigs and meat chickens. But one thing that like we have started is we um, like on the neighbors helping neighbors page, if somebody's needing some food, um, we're like, Hey, we've got some milk. Like yeah. it's not pasteurized. It's not homogenized, but like if you that's need this, cool. so yeah. kind of like a, a small ministry. That's cool. That too. Well, wow. if you need pigs, what's Richard's last name, Nick? Earlry? No, the Richard from the Spartan. I don't oh, know how to say his last um, name. Mulinex. Mil- <laughs> Ricardo. Name, yeah, Ricardo. That's what I said, didn't no. I? No. What did I say? Richard. Oh, Ricardo. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo, whatever his last Ricardo, name is. Ricardo Mulinex. So he raises these pigs that are like I didn't know special that. pigs, like special meat pigs. They're called red. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. Oh, I've, I I know what you're talking about. But anyway, so they have like marbling in their meat and like they're the best eating pigs ever. And he raises them and sells wow. the babies so people can I raise for me. Ri- wow. Ricardo. He's really cool. Too. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Ricardo. He's so awesome. Can I just share something? So he, because I did the Spartan, he had to ask me what my um, birth date was. Mm-hmm. And he knew when the date was because it was the day before my birthday, but he didn't know the year. He's like, and I told him, he was like, are you serious? He's like, if I would have, if you wouldn't have responded, I would have said 2000. I said, thank you so <laughs> much. That's almost 10 years off. Wow. Anyways, so he's like really up in my coolness right yeah. now because he thinks I'm 20 years old. Yeah. And how old are you? 31. 32, my bad. Okay. Yep. All okay. right, next question. Doug Bragg. He wants to know what are the best and the worst parts of adoption and how can we help Hands of Hope Ministry? The best part of adoption is... uh you know, I get to raise these beautiful kids, yeah. um, raise them up in, in God's kingdom. Uh, the worst part for me, and this is being like super vulnerable, is feel like imposter syndrome, mm. I feel like, in being a mom. Mm. 
Mm. because like I haven't gone through like that baby stage and Mm. like raising them up. I mean, we've had Thomas since he was two, but like you still miss out on a Mm -hmm. lot Um, and realizing like I am not their bio mom. I never will be. Mm -hmm. Um, She is like, she has something with them that I'll never have. And I have something with them that she'll never have. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. Um, helping hands of hope ministry, um, volunteering for meals mm-hmm. is always nice. The third Monday of every month. Um, cause people pick once a month, right? Cause there have yes. been small groups that have been picking mm-hmm. once a month. And so, yeah, yeah. So it's just once a month. Um, and who then, would they reach out to that? Is that Rayanne? Yeah. Okay. Rayanne would be Cause great. Rayanne would, if you want to volunteer for a month, then speak to Rayanne. And then childcare for those nights as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then care communities again, so mm-hmm. they can reach out to me for that. Yeah, good. All right, those are it. That was a lot. Okay, so end us up, Jenny. Give us the the mess the where yep. people can be sending yep. their messages into. Yep. So if you aren't a part of our podcasting texting group, then you text podcast to 260-408-8383 and that will get you on a list. And every week we send out a text that has who's gonna be on it. And we give a little bit of a bio. It's enough for you to ask a question for, but we want you to be engaged with us and ask questions back. And throughout the week, maybe if you know somebody that wants to be on the podcast, if you want to be on the podcast, just anything. Yeah. And again, I maybe to emphasize too, that part of the way that we do the podcast is to be able to not only tell your story so that people can get to know you, but the people that are listening or watching can also gain, um, understanding or aspects from you to help them you right. know, in their journey. So for the people that are on there for our texting group, I mean, I would just remind people, more people should be on the group. I mean, I don't know how many people are on there, but yeah. we should get more people that are in the texting group and more people that are interested about other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when they send it out there, asking the questions is an interest in somebody else's life and an interest in what they're doing. And I just think it makes the podcast that much better yeah. right? when you can be able to ask questions questions from a different perspective and then we can, you know, go off of that. So if you're out there and you're listening and, and, or watching again, find a way and maybe Jenny sends out that link to just like get on there, get on our podcasting Mm -hmm. group and, and send in questions so that you can get to know our uh, guests even better from that. So parting words of wisdom for all of our listeners, Um. anything? From a mom's perspective. From a mom's perspective. Be intentional with your kids. Mm. Super intentional. There you go. That's perfect. All right. So again, thanks everybody for joining us. Don't forget that Jenny, when she puts out her link, share it, like it, Mm -hmm. comment. If you're on our YouTube, make sure that you comment. That helps us in understanding how to continue to get better and spread out the word. Huh? Subscribe. Subscribe. Yes. Yeah. Do all of yeah. those things, yeah. you know, to be able to help us be able to get the word out again. If you see, pretty make sure you come up and talk to her. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of the best ways to figure out how to get involved in Hands of Hope. Come and see her on Sunday morning. Maybe that's not the best time. <laughs> but <laughs> Anytime. Or, I mean, I'm just saying when you got kid. kids. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're watching and you see Bree like, say hi, encourage her. Because again, that ministry, the things that she's doing. Yeah. I mean, it's a great opportunity for the, for people to be able to get Mm -hmm. involved and help out and be a part of that. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.